For question three on the final, first I calculated the values that happened before the shock. And so I calculated the area, I defined area one and area two to be just on either side of the shock. And those areas will be equal because the shock has zero width. And then using the relationship A1 over A star, I was able to find the Mach number one, which is just before the shock. And then using this Mach number and the given stagnation pressure, I was able to find um, P1. And then I did a similar process to find the um, values after, just after the shock. And so I used the same A2 equals A1. However, this was now in the convert, or no, sorry, the diverging side of the, of the pipe. So it had a different Mach number. And then similarly, I found the P02 and P2. And then I found the A star at the exit using this um, M2, which was the Mach number just after the shock. And I found that to be 35.36 um, square centimeters. And then between points two and three, and two is defined just after the shock, and three was like at the exit or um, to the right of the shock. And so the flow is entirely isentropic. And so P naught three equals P naught two, which is the same value that was calculated before. And the same goes for temperature. The T naught three equals T naught two, which equals um, the T naught one because the stagnation um, values are constant. And then um, I found the Mach number three using the relationship between A3 and A star. And I used like the chart in the textbook using the Mach number that I found to find the corresponding um, T3 over T naught three and then solve for T3 and similarly solve for the exit pressure. P3, using the same chart from the textbook and the, the given, or not the given, but the previously calculated Mach number.